All right, we are recording. So hello, everyone. Welcome to our first installment of the 2021 Heartbeat Artist Interview Series. My name is Georgina, and I am the Youth Services Librarian at Ajax Public Library. Heartbeat is an annual art show where we encourage our five local high schools to submit their students' art, which we would then hang in our rotary room for all to enjoy at our main branch. Of course, this year's Heartbeat is a little different, but we still wanted to create a virtual space to display and celebrate the truly jaw-dropping art created by teens in our community. This year, we received submissions from Pickering High School and Archbishop Dennis O'Connor Catholic High School. I would like to extend my thanks to both of those schools art teachers for working with us to help us create this show. You can view the full live gallery of submissions on our website at ajaxlibrary.ca and we will also be hosting a live gallery viewing on Facebook live on Monday, May 17th at 5 p.m. And there will also be an on demand YouTube video where we will show all of the art and share some of the artist statements we received. Another element of this year's show are the artist interviews that you are tuning into right now. We wanted to reach out to the students who created these wonderful pieces and find out more about their process and their artistic plans for the future. So it's at this point that I'll introduce our special guest. We're joined today by Isabella from Dennis O'Connor, whose piece Behind the Frame depicts a new interpretation of Alice in Wonderland, where the tantalizing specter of social media is the rabbit hole we all too often find ourselves falling into. Thank you so much for joining us today, Isabella. Thank you. And I'm also joined by Arisha, who is a member of our Teen Advisory Committee, and she's going to help me facilitate this interview. So hi, Arisha. Hi. Okay, Isabella, thank you so much for joining us. We want to ask you some questions about your submission uh, for this year's show, the, uh, your actual piece behind the frame. And then Arisha is going to ask you some more general questions. So before I get into them, let me just change this slide so that we can all see your amazing painting. So this is behind the frame. And the first question I wanted to ask you, Isabella, is what was the assignment you were given that inspired this painting? Yeah, so the assignment for, I did this in my grade, in my art class at school and the assignment was um, postmodern art and we had to create a body of artwork um, using postmodern art principles and we had to depict a certain theme that um, was really special to us. So for, for me, my theme was um, social media, but um, more specifically the dangers of social media and this piece behind the frame, um, it depicts how easy it is to fall for um, edited social media images and how easy it is to want to be like part of the part of the glorified life that is mostly depicted on social media. Wow. Okay. So it was postmodern. That is, that is such a deep theme. And then my next question in terms of actually painting it is what was the medium you used to create this piece? Um, so I used acrylic paint on canvas. Wow. Okay. Um, it looks, is it, uh, how large is it in person? Is it quite it's, big? Yeah, it's 16 by 20 inches. Wow. So okay. it is kind of big, yeah. Um, my next question, obviously things have been a little different for the past year almost. So where did you end up having to paint this piece? Um, so since it was part of a school project, I did do some of it at school. And then I did, I also um, worked on it at my own house. Wow, okay, so you had to take it home eventually? Yeah. Okay, and can you describe your process in creating this work? Like, were there any difficulties or highlights in the process that you want to mention? Um, so I started off, I already had the idea in mind of alluding to Alice in Wonderland. And, and I already, I immediately made the connection to the rabbit hole, how it's like something you follow and then it's not as it seems. I think the only difficulty for me was figuring out how I actually wanted to picture it, like how I wanted to show it on a canvas, because 
the idea is it can be, when you think of it, it can be anything. Um, so I did do some sketches of like Alice falling through the, the rabbit hole. And then um, as I was painting it, more ideas came to me. So initially there wasn't like the Snapchat ghost flying away or the Twitter bird flying away. That all came to me like about halfway through the painting. <laughs> and then um, the idea of the, the frame, like the actual frame, um, that also came to me afterwards. Like I was originally going to just paint a frame on there and then I was like, let's make it 3D. So this frame, if, if we were seeing the painting in person, this frame is actually attached to the painting. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, you definitely see it with the white background that it is three dimensional. That, how did you, this is, I want to add this in, how did you affix, did you just glue it onto the painting directly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I love it. I think it is so effective. And speaking about the frame and sort of the symbolism of this painting, you submitted an artist statement to us and you mentioned how Alice falling down the rabbit hole, um, you were thinking about that in relation to people falling for the glorified images we see on social media. And I was just wondering if you could expand on that idea and your thoughts in your artist statement. Yeah, so originally when I had this idea, I knew that I was thinking of the frame as a metaphor for um, how, like for example, on Instagram, when you see feed, it is it is like cropped and framed to show, to show the perfect picture. Mm -hmm. And so behind the frame is basically what what isn't shown and what is really there. And so, yeah. <laughs> so would you say, that, again, I just wanna add this in, if we're viewing it, is the viewer Alice? Like I know you describe Alice as sort of a victim. Do you think that the viewer in this position is Alice or are we watching Alice fall? What do you think? I think the viewer could be both because some people may recognize that that they themselves do sometimes fall for it. Like, I know for me, I used to always fall for, like, I was, I would always look at social media and think, wow, how is this so perfect? And um, the viewer can also be someone who recognizes that and then decides not to fall for it and then looks at Alice as the victim and then reflects to themselves, like, why that's dangerous. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that we get to have this submission as part of our show. As I mentioned at the beginning, it is going to be um, one of the pieces that is shown during our, our gallery on the website, our live gallery and the gallery event on YouTube. And um, Isabella did send us an artist statement. So we will be sharing that as well in a different video. But um, I'm gonna pass it over to Arisha now, who's gonna ask you some more general questions about how art factors into your life and your process with art. All right, so um, what is your preferred medium to work with? Um, currently, my preferred medium is acrylic paint on either canvas or wood or cardboard or anything. Um, and if it's not acrylic paint, it's usually graphite or charcoal, um, cause I like to draw as well. Okay. Um, can you explain like your process for creating new pieces? Like what do you do to kind of start that creative process? Um, so generally if I don't already have an idea in mind, I will look online for inspiration pictures like multiple inspiration pictures just to to like combine them and try to fit the idea that I'm kind of thinking of and then after that I will after the idea is like clear in my mind I'll maybe um, do a few sketches in my sketchbook um, and then just from there I'll go ahead and <laughs> do the artwork okay yeah that's pretty cool um so what are your sources for inspiration i know you already kind of mentioned that but like is there anything more specific that like artists or specific styles that would influence your work um well usually i find myself being inspired by people um a lot of my artwork is centered around like 
the human form or has anything to do with people. Um, and I'm really inspired by the mood that I'm in when like at the moment that I'm creating the artwork, because a lot of the time I just do paintings or drawings like as a way to relax or like art therapy. Um, so yeah, I would say the mood that I'm in and as well as the people around me, they they're usually the inspirations for my artwork. Um, so are there any skills or techniques that you like learned in, in art class or that you improved on in art class? Yeah, I would say the skill that um, is most useful that I've learned from art class is gesture drawing, like um, gesture sketches of, it's basically um, loose sketches of the human form. Oh. Um, and it's really, really fun to do as a warm up for if you're gonna draw like the human body or in a certain pose, or if you wanna um, depict movement of the human body. So the, ge the gesture sketches, um, that's a really fun skill that we've done in art class that I think is really useful to me. Did you use like a gesture technique for like this painting? I did, yeah. Um, I found an inspiration image online of someone falling and then I, um, did the gesture sketches for like how to make the arms and the legs proportionate, for example, mm -hmm. and how to show it not like how to show the body, but not make it too stiff looking, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it looks really natural in the painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, last question. How do you see art factoring into your life in the future? Um, well, I hope to um, in the future, like in university, to combine my artistic skills with science because I really like science. Um, and I'm considering, I've considered careers such as industrial design or like graphic design. Also, um, like biomedical engineering, which is how prosthetics are made, because that way, like, I can combine my knowledge of my artistic knowledge of the human form, for example, with yeah. actual science and engineering to make prosthetics. So I think that's, yeah, that's how I plan to combine artistic skills in the future with science. Ooh, I hadn't thought about how they would connect that way. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So that's the end of my question. Your answers are really interesting. Yeah, Isabel, you had so many good answers for us that we just sort of flew through. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today and for talking about this painting. This, um, I am so glad that, you know, despite everything, we've been able to continue to have a show and that you were able to submit work to it. And I really look forward to having everybody join us to sort of get to appreciate it and see what we saw today. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.